Super Typhoon Sorage has continued to blow expectations out of the water with a current wind speed of 185 miles per hour, a central pressure of 895 millibars, the storm is moving 9 miles an hour to the northwest, and it is a CDPS stage rating of 5. Breaking down that stage 5, wind speed of just over moderate, storm size in between a significant and major, rainfall potential in between major to extreme, and overall threat to land is significant. Now a stage 5 does mean devastating damage is still possible, it's only saturating due to the close pass with the Philippines not necessarily a landfall. It's a rather large, now 185 to the northeast, 175 to the southeast, 140 to the southwest, 150 to the northwest. Those figures in nautical miles. The distances of the storm from the, from land: 262 miles from Taft, 295 from Tacloban, 296 from Surigao City, 324 from Bisley, and 590 from Manila, the capital. That's 422 kilometers away from Taft, 475 from Tacloban, 476 from Surigao City, 521 from Bisley, and 950 from Manila. Please pause the video if you wish to view the watches and warnings that are currently in effect as they are signal 2. Maximum sustained winds, like I mentioned earlier, we are going with 185 miles an hour, which is also in agreement with the JTWC which are also going with 185 miles an hour. Speaking of the JTWC, here is the latest cone from them. Now it is a very, very close brush with the Philippines right now, but uh, landfall is still not expected. The storm is expected to curve northward. But residents in the Philippines should still keep an eye out on this system due to tropical storm force with conditions that can still be affected in their local area as there is at least a 40% chance of tropical storm force conditions that could affect your local area. And the sea staff, the temperatures are still re remaining relatively warm for a type of system, enough to support intensification up to 185, which it has done. But as the storm continues to track northwards, it should encounter cooler sea surface temperatures. The multimodal diagnostic comparisons pretty much peaking at this stage in the storm's life. Deep layer shear is still on the low down, with sea surface temperatures and relative humidity staying relatively the same, sea surface temperatures precipitously decreasing. And there we go, so this is a storm that is not to be taken lightly, it is still affecting the Philippines as we speak with tropical storm force conditions and people should have at least started to prepare for the worst case scenario.